Hey crafters, it's me Jen Evers with Quality Crafts and today what we're covering is the top 10 essential must-have DIY paper crafter tools that every beginner needs in their paper supplies arsenal. Woo! Now this is not all inclusive of everything you're ever going to need for paper crafting but if you're a beginner you're going to want to stick around because I'm going to give you my top 10 of things that I think that you would need to get started. Now keep in mind I've been crafting for a very, very long time, so I'm going to give you ideas of things that might seem a little costly on the get-go, but in the long term, they're going to save you money, and they're going to be great investments, and they're going to last you your crafty or hobby uh, paper crafting lifetime. So stick with me. Now before I get going on the top 10, I'm kind of assuming you already have some kind of a craft mat. But that, you know, when a, when you're making an assumption, that's not always a good thing. So what I'm using right now, and you can see it right here in the bottom screen here, is one of these large cooking mats. They are made out of essentially the same thing that a craft mat is made out of, but this one is a little bit thicker, a little bit more heavy duty than the one that I got from Ranger um, originally and it's black instead of tan. Now the color doesn't matter to me, but if it matters to you, you want to buy the one that is your preference, of course. But these are going to be sold in the qualitycrafts.com store. And it is 16, what is it? Let me make sure I give you the correct measurement. 16 and a quarter by 23 inches long. It is a big one. Now these can be cut down to any size. So I could cut these in half. And you could get a smaller one if that would fit your um, crafting space better. But you're going to want something that is heat resistant and um, non-stick, which these are. And these are really excellent quality. Ranger also makes one that I really, really like. It's tan. And um, so I'm assuming that as we start out that you already have the base for crafting, which is a mat and a surface to work on. So let's get started with number one. Number one is a paper trimmer. Now, whether it be making card bases or making cuts for a card or a project or a 3D, whatever it is that you're creating, you're going to want something that's going to cut your paper. You want a smooth cut. You want an accurate cut, a straight cut. And you want to make sure that you're not replacing your blades over and over again because it defeats the purpose of having a cutter that's going to last your crafting lifetime. If you buy one of the... One of the um, trimmers that has blades like this. Let me just pull one out here. This is a replaceable blade. And if you look on the bottom there, these get all gunked up, the blades get dull, and you have to replace these over and over again. I'm going to save you the headache of the research and using that. And if you already have one, that these are awesome. I own like four or five of them. But what I'm going to tell you right now is I'm going to show you a picture here of a paper trimmer. This is the one I have now. It's a Fisker's paper trimmer. Not only is it large, so you can cut, you know, whatever size you need, but it also folds in half if you need. It has the double bars and the rotating blade, which means this is going to, uh, it's going to heal the blade. It's going to self-sharpen, basically. And you won't have to replace this blade. This should last you pretty much forever unless you know you use it inappropriately or cut something that's too thick in that case you might have to replace the blade and I do believe that there's a way to do that but for right now I've been using this for almost a year I think and I have not had any problems with it and I absolutely love it number two is a pair of scissors and I have tons of scissors in my crafting arsenal these are a handful of scissors that I have. I'm going to put them down here so you can see them all. The one that I'm recommending to you today, if you're going to go out and purchase just one pair of scissors, would be this large one. And I'm going to tell you why. This is a Fisker scissors, and I tend to really, really like Fisker products. I think they just make them great for the long haul. This is a non stick scissor, it's big enough for anybody to handle. So if you have arthritis or whatever, this is one of the larger ones. It will cut anything. It's got a sh very sharp blade, and it will last a long, long time. I've had this one for a long time. Um, I, I do want to show you. Here's another version of this scissors. It's one of the newer versions. It's 
it's still got the same ergonomic handle. It's a little bit, I think more, it looks a little more squishy, like maybe it's more a lighter plastic, but it is an all around really good pair of scissors for doing fussy cutting and for cutting anything that you would need. Number three would be a scoreboard of some kind. I own the Martha Stewart scoreboard. It looks like this. And it comes with a plastic bone folder. But I find that the plastic bone folders tend to wear out. And after a while, they wear down. And then they don't make a really nice deep mark. So I recommend getting a stylus like this. A stylus will last you much longer. It's made out of metal on each side, and it's not going to give after using it for a long time. So getting back to the point that a scoreboard you're going to need for uh, scoring your cardstock to make card bases and to also make fancy fold cards and boxes and envelopes and all those fun things that you see everybody doing, this really is a must-have. And there's going to be another one in my list. I'm going to get down to the ruler. If you can't afford this right off the get-go, head for the ruler with the metal edge. That's your next best bet. All right, number three. Nope, I hit number three. We're going down to number four. Number four, I'm going to talk about glues and tapes. Now, on the screen, you're going to see my favorite glue. It's Aline's Original Tacky Glue. You can purchase this practically anywhere, including Walmart, Joann's, Michael's, that type of thing. And then next to it, you're going to see the three types that I carry in my store. I do not carry wet glue. I carry these other three products. I carry the ATG tape. And that is a really long tape, double-sided, that you can put on using a glue gun. A glue glider gun like this one and I'm going to talk about this one as well a little bit later in the list but these are replacement refills and I sell them at a budget-friendly price that's way lower than the box source this is a sticky double-sided tape this is a lot stronger than this one so if you're looking for something that's going to hold together those boxes and three-dimensional things this is sticky tape this is what you're looking for I also have the little bottles in my store, qualitycrafts.com. If you're looking for a place, you know, a nice fine tip that you can use for all of your crafting products, and you can put your Aline's Tacky Glue right in there. So here's one that I actually use. I put a stainless steel uh, tip, stainless steel pin in the tip so that it doesn't come out and it keeps that from not clogging. So if you purchase it from my store, it also comes with the pin. The last thing that you might want to uh, think about getting some of are um, foam dots. So they come in like squares and circles and all kinds of stuff. The one that I sell in my store is this mounting tape. There are five and a half yards on here already. It's you can and you can take your your non stick scissors and just cut this to any size that you want. That's why I really really like that one and I highly recommend it. So QualityCrafts.com carries all of these supplies. If you're looking for links to all the other things that I'm giving in the, top, in the top 10, go down to the description box. I'll leave an Amazon link so that you can get any of the products you see here today. And just know that I'm an affiliate with them, so I get a teeny tiny commission if you purchase anything. And that helps me keep my channel sustainable, so I thank you very much for using my links. Let's continue on now. Um, we talked about glues and tapes, so I'm going to move on to the tape ATG tape glider. And you'll see in the picture here, this is a brand new one, and it comes with two refills. You can get it from Amazon. You can also get these from Michaels, so I get, you know, I recommend get using those coupons that Joanne's and Michaels has for like 40 to 60% off, because this is one of those things I talked about saying, it's an investment, I realize it's a, and people have a hard time swallowing the cost of this, but it will last you forever. And if you're looking for an easy way to put uh, glue and tape and putting things together and putting things down in your card and your cards and your cardstock projects. Um, this is a fast, efficient way to do it. And it's one of the most inexpensive ways to do it. And the ones that I carry in my store, these fit right in that pink one. So if you're thinking about wanting to purchase, these are only $2 a roll in my store. If you're thinking about purchasing something that will use these, make sure it's the Scotch Pink Glue Lighter Gun. And, okay, moving on. So I talked about the scoreboard, right? The ruler is the other one. So this one is a Tim Holtz ruler. You don't have to buy the Tim Holtz brand, but this is the one that I could find on Amazon that was easy to get. 
Um, I just highly recommend that it's got a metal edge because you want something that's going to give you a very straight line and plastic is easily dented and, and scraped. So this is a, this is just one that I think would last you a long time and you'd be very, very happy with. I have a regular, um, wooden one that I use most of the time and it's got a metal edge as well. So let's talk about cardstock. When you're starting out being a paper crafter, you're going to use a lot of cardstock. And I'm biased towards cards because I am a card maker at heart. So I use white cardstock. I love 110 pound white cardstock. This is the kind that I use. It's a Nina brand. So I'll show you up on the screen here. This is what it looks like when you purchase it from Amazon. It comes in a ream. It's 110 pound white cardstock. So the, the higher the number, like 94, 96, 98, the whiter the paper is gonna be, the brighter white you're going to get. Um, mine usually runs around a 96 brightness, but that is completely up to you. And then of course, all the other pattern papers and papers and cardstocks and things that you're gonna wanna use for your cards is such a personal choice. I would totally leave that up to you as you start creating and then you find your style and what you're looking for. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is a bone folder and this is number eight. Sorry if I haven't been numbering these as we go. Maybe in editing I'll remember to put in a little number to keep you on track. But I'm going to talk about bone folders now. So I have a bone folder that looks like this. And the Martha Stewart one, like I said, comes with a plastic one really try to invest in one of these bone folders. They're really inexpensive and they're really hard. Okay, so they're not gonna give. This one's all dinged up and it's got stains and stuff on it, but it will last you forever. And this is one of the least expensive tools. So between this and the stylus, I can't remember if I showed you the stylus, but let me bring that out right now. If you can't find the bone folder, find a stylus. These two tools do the same exact thing. They're both very hard, this one being metal and this one being actual bone. They're going to last. So between these two, these are both, you know, very, very much um, what I would highly recommend getting. And you're going to use those over and over again, especially in card making. So now moving on to number nine. If you're going to be a stamper and a card maker, you're going to need ink. And this is the ink that I absolutely love. I fell in love with it the first time I got it, and now I won't use anything else. I also really love Stazon and Memento. But VersaFine Onyx Black ink, go into the description box below. I'll have a link there for you. It'll lead you straight to Amazon so you can find it easily. We're almost to the last one, number 10. And then after that, I'm going to just give a little dialogue about other things that you might want to think about getting. And all of, and then, you know, I'm going to talk about things that I love and products I really think are cool. But that's going to be above and beyond the 10 things that I really think you need to get started. So let's just move on to number 10. And then if you're really interested, to stick around in the video. I'm going to talk about more of that fun stuff. So number 10 are blocks for stamping. So if you're going to get into stamping with your card making and your project making, maybe you're going to be a scrapbooker, I don't know, paper crafter, right? You're going to want blocks for your stamps because many, many stamps come as acrylic, peel off or sticky kind of stamps, which means you need a base to stick them to, to, to use the stamps. This one is a very highly affordable, super budget friendly set that comes with five different sizes and you get it straight from Amazon. The link is in the description box below again for your convenience. I am an affiliate and I get a small commission if you purchase through my link so I really really appreciate it and thank you so much for doing that anytime you can. And there you have it. We've gotten through the top 10. I hope you enjoyed that. This is a video that a lot of people have been really looking forward to and now I just want to take some time to talk to you about things that other things that I really like. So glues and having um, a space to do your crafting is really, really important. You have your nonstick mat, right? You have your glues and your rulers and your straight edges, your stylus or your bone folder, your scissors, things to cut, your trimmer, and your blocks and your stamps, and you're all set, right? That's the absolute basic. Then you start adding on fun things like glitter glues and stickles. 
that you can make all of your projects brighter and cooler and you're going to want more inks, I'm sure, and different kind of embellishments. And this is where it comes in where everyone needs to make up their own mind. As you get crafting, you're going to start getting a feel for your style, right? So you're going to, um, there's also things like this um, buddy, I don't know what you call this, an embossing buddy, right? So if you get into embossing, then there's embossing powders and there's heat gun. So you might want to, you know, think about making a list of things that you want and adding it to your Christmas list or your birthday list and have people help you out, you know? Um, so a heat gun is another one that you're going to want when you start working on maybe adding an embossing to your um, everyday thing. So this is an embossing powder. And then I keep all my embossing powders inside of boxes like this. It just really helps when you use them. But see, now we're expanding into just groves and groves of all kinds of things that you could be getting. People get into watercoloring when they do that. Um, other people, when they start out crafting, they like to have a glue gun handy. Do you need a glue gun or a heat or embossing or any of this to start card making? Absolutely not. But there's so much. And then we're going to start talking about... Um, you're going to want to start maybe getting some other colors of inks. So there's, you know, Tim Holtz Distress inks. And there are Stampin' Up! inks. Something similar to this. There are all kinds of inks out there. Just tons of brands. So what I would recommend is when you're starting to get overwhelmed, just start making a list. Okay? And then buy, like... The small sizes, like these little, these little guys, and try it out. A lot of inks will have these smaller sizes for a very budget-friendly price. Get some and try them out. See if you like them. See what other people are using. Like I said, I've gone through a lot of ink. I really, really like the Versafine. If you want a crisp, clear, perfect image every time, Versafine, I find, is just amazing for that. And then you're going to get into embossing. You're going to need Versamark or clear ink. That's down the road. Start just creating a list and deciding what your must-haves are going to be before you just start going out and buying. And then you end up with a whole room full of stuff that maybe 50% of the stuff to 85% of the stuff you're not using. I really, really hope that um, I, this is one of my more serious videos. I feel like I should be laughing and being jolly, ho, 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 but, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, and then there's sprays. I'm just looking around my room for you guys right now. Here's a spray. Oh, and if you don't know me, uh, I wear pajama pants when I craft, so you're going to see pajama pants. Here are some spray inks. Check back in my videos. I have a lot of DIY videos, so you might not even have to go out and buy. You know, instead of buying, DIYing, that's really cool. You can do that kind of thing. Uh, and then you're going to have markers. People are going marker crazy these days. You can get all sorts of markers. So here's a Spectrum Noir, and I really like these. So I do a lot um, through Spectrum Noir. And then you can just get regular colors, uh, markers, colored pencils come into play. So here's a set of colored pencils. Crayola markers are good for creating different things. And then you have all of these other markers. So you've got distress markers and you've got other regular markers. And on and on and on. And you've got the Copics and all that stuff. You could, I could go on for, I don't know how long. There's washi tape. There's, I had a list prepared, but somehow it's disappeared into La La Land here. But you get my point. This is. This industry has ex expanded into so many different creative, fun things, and it's always coming at us, and there's always new trends, and we want it all, right? But stop and think. I And if you've even made it to this part of my video, I hope that the top 10 helped you, and I hope that when you look at all the stuff that's out there, that you'll start making a list and deciding for yourself as you gain more experience what you really want to invest your dollars in. And then, of course, um, I do want you to visit qualitycrafts.com where I've got budget-friendly prices as well. Check out my videos. I'm always showing you tips and tricks on how to save money, use your tools more wisely, make things using less tools, 
and just having fun with what you have. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy it all today. All right, so I really, really am so glad that you stopped by to watch this video today. I had a lot of fun making it for you. It was, it took a lot of time because you really have to process through all this stuff. But how fun. And you know what? I cannot wait to see you guys next video.